It is Bronze and Modern Gods. I'm John, and that man over there is Richard. Hello, Richard. Hi, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It is a bonus episode. Your comments, your questions, your brick bats. What is a brick bat? I've always heard. Wow. That. Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> find out if you know what a brick bat is. Please leave it in the comments. <laughs> it's a special kind of flying rodent. Uh, you know, it's a brick bat. He throws a brick. <laughs> I don't know. But hey, follow us at Bronze and Modern Gods on Facebook and Instagram. Give us a like if you're watching us on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so you know when we go live. And leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. You know the deal. Hey, live sale tonight. That's amazing. Yes, live sale. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you're excited. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a live sale on the Bronze and Modern Gods Instagram uh, uh, page. Make sure you're following us there at Bronze and Modern Gods. Friday, today, September 24th, today at 8 p.m. Eastern, Richard's time, 5 p.m. Pacific, my time, selling comic books, hanging out, uh, taking questions from you guys live, just basically uh, like, you know, we're your local uh, uh, comic shop and you're coming in and you're picking up your books and you got you got a little chat with us. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's always a good time. We, we have more fun hanging out with uh, with the audience than necessarily selling books. And you know the books we do have are Richard's got you covered on moderns and exclusive variants. I got you on the oddball stuff. If you're looking for Marvel westerns and some chilies and uh, some other stuff uh, like Mexican foil variants, I'm your guy. That is tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at Bronze of Modern Gods on Instagram. And now, Richard, it is well, time for what we're here for, viewer mail. You've got mail. Yeah. My first piece of viewer mail, mail is from... Drake scares. Um, this is in regards to the Iron Man number twelve cover that we talked about uh, a previous show. It's a uh, it's a Miles Morales cover. As How much Morales? It's Miles of Morales. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the Iron Man cover is based on a Bruce Lee DJ image found online and on T-shirts. Popular streetwear image. You know, th thank you so much for for pointing out the source of that of that design. I actually went and found it um here's an image of it it is bruce lee standing in front of a dj console and he's doing his dj stuff so this is an homage to that and it gives it more credence and, and a little bit i respect it a little bit more but i still think as a spec book it's it's doesn't have any doesn't have the legs that i would i would uh, expect for a book that i'm going to invest money in is that Bruce Lee image a Photoshop? I mean, I don't think it can be possibly real. The DJ culture did not exist when Bruce Lee was walking the earth. There are, there are, let's put it this way. There are a lot of doctored images of that image. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where uh, who knows what pixels are the original pixels out of that image. This is when I feel every inch of my age. Um, yeah. When yeah. I talk, run the jewel. What's a run the jewels? Um, all right. <laughs> my first piece of viewer mail comes from P. Parker Peters. Get it? Uh huh. He emailed us at bronze and modern gods at gmail.com on the website. I am a returning collector from the late 70s, 80s, early 90s. A little bit of a range there. Um, recently at work. <laughs> I had a fellow employee ask if I wanted to buy some of these raw modern books as he needed money for some car repairs. I love those conversations at work. You, you collect comics, don't you, John? My grandmother has a bunch. Can you look at them for me? <laughs> sure can. Bring it in. I ended up buying some stray dogs, 40 plus issues. Something is killing the children, 25 plus issues. Wow. A nice house on the lake, 10 issues. Wow. Uh, all near men are better. I'm now wondering how to sell some of these books. Do I grade them or sell them raw? And what do I keep? Well, I think we have several different ideas for you. Number one, tonight we're having a live sale on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such the salesman, John. <laughs> Just, uh, I, I can't help it. Um, watch us. Tune in. Watch how we do it. You're going to have to build an audience first, to be fair. Uh, get a lot of followers there. Or you can... Send the books to be slabbed. I suggest pressing them first or finding someone who can press them for you. You want to maximize this investment. I would say your best bet at this point, Richard, you're going to kill me. You might want to go the eBay route because you don't, I'm assuming you don't have a big Instagram following uh, yet. You want to flip this for some quick cash. You might have more luck just 
putting them up on eBay, being honest, taking plenty of photos of all the corners, the spine, the back, and just putting a buy it now based on what the uh, previous completed sales have been showing and sit back and count the money after eBay's take. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, um, this, this is an interesting situation. Um, I would probably slab the number ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the other issues, uh, I don't think there's any significance in most of the other issues. I shouldn't say significance. I, I don't think you're going to get a, your return on your investment for slabbing and, and pressing for the other books. In yeah, the I would say for the issues two and on, unless they were the Stray Dogs movie variant first, mm -hmm. ones, those I would slab. Uh, and maybe something is killing the children one through ten. I, yeah. I would do those, but nice house on the lake, two, three. I would. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I would start off slow. Don't, don't, don't send in 40 books into CGC. Uh, first of all, you'll get sticker shock when you actually get the bill uh, for what that's going to cost you. And also your books are out of, out of your hands for six months. So you have no opportunity to sell them uh, for that period of time. So uh, I'm with John. I think uh, for someone who doesn't have, uh, a following on social media, the best bet still is eBay. eBay has a huge outreach in terms of an audience. Um, there are fees involved. The fees can be significant. And there are some caveats to the way that eBay pays you uh, and how they support sellers. That's, that's, that's our real um, disagreement with eBay. But it's, it's still a great, great way of selling anything, really. And comic books are, there's a huge marketplace for comic books. So as John said, take good pictures, uh, make sure that you're very clear and honest and open with whoever wants to communicate with you so that when, when the sale is closed, you'll get good feedback and that builds your feedback. And it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a great cycle if you're, if you're doing a good job. So yeah, uh, eBay is a great place to sell all those other issues. Wait for six months. Those number ones will come back. Um, and at that point you'll be able to make more profit on them than if you sold them raw almost guaranteed all the titles you mentioned there is a following for and i don't think six months is going to to hurt that following you you may see an increase in value over that period of time hey they may announce a movie between now and then so uh, you never know which would be great for you um uh, another option is whatnot um mm -hmm. you don't need a big following to sell on whatnot uh, because people can search by uh, what they're looking for, just like eBay, they type in Stray Dogs number one first print, you're going to show up on whatnot. Uh, experiment a bit. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, whatnot's an interesting choice. Um, it's so brand new, and the audience there is still feeling out the comic book aspect of it. They sell a lot of Pokemon cards on there. It's a lot of baseball cards, sports cards, and comic books seem to be kind of a new ad. So, but it's it it does have a very low barrier of entry, and you know you have a built-in audience right there. All right. What's your next piece of viewer mail? My next piece of mail is from ERS. Um, and this is regards to NFTs. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. NFTs are not comics. People also said the internet was a fad. The earth is flat. Who would want a computer on their desk? Bitcoin is a scam. Amazon was a joke. And now <laughs> NFTs are not comics. Uh, I, I never say NFTs did, did not have a place or even can be a significant source of revenue. I just don't consider them comic books. And to that end, I can have a physical copy of a comic. I can reach behind me and grab. Don't drop. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch out. I can grab this comic book, right? I have this comic book in my hand. It is a piece of, uh, it is a durable good. And I can. I have my NFT right here. <laughs> uh, but what happens if the company that is supplying the NFTs uh, decide change ownership and their policies change and your access and they, let's say they go out of business? Uh, who knows? There's but some there's a third party that sits between you and your property at that point, and um, it really isn't your property. It's not your property any more than um, you know. The music you get off a of streaming service is your property. Um, but it, I, I just, I'm not saying it's not something that has value. I'm just saying that for me and my collecting hobby, a comic book is one of those things. They're, they're a physical, durable good that I can trade. I, can, I could show up to a convention, 
hand somebody this piece, you know, this comic book and get another comic book and trade. Um, and we both walk away with the durable good in that process. NFTs aren't that. NFTs are something completely different. And while they have the guise of comic books, they have the face of comic books, I still say that they do not fit the definition of a, a, a collectible comic book. And Richard, you ignorant slut. <laughs> uh, as we will see tonight on our live sale on Instagram at Bronze and Modern Gods at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific, I will be selling a few comic NFTs and I will be taking that cash and converting it into hard copy comics. <laughs> so I do want to split some hairs here. Uh, I, I actually do agree with you when you say NFTs are not comic books. I disagree with you when you say comics are not NFTs. The key phrase here is comic books, the book modifier. Total agreement. Physical but you can have a comic NFT. I'm going on here. I can look at my Avengers eight and read it. It's a comic. It's on my phone. Yeah, I, I, you're, you're right. That, that, that kind of distinction, because these NFTs do come with a readable comic. When you purchase them, you can read your, you know, your copy of whatever you're buying. Um, but, I, but yeah, and the comic book is a physical book mm -hmm. and there is a difference. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've already seen that NFTs can have a significant value. I I sold one uh, last week for twelve hundred gems, fourteen hundred gems, um, and which I will eventually, hopefully, convert to some kind of monetary currency as opposed to gems. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's value in these things, and I think that there is going to be value in them for a, a, a good a good long time, hopefully. Um, once the market kind of stabilizes, but they're not, uh, they don't meet the definition of what I collect. I hear and, you know, and, and that I think is a personal choice more than anything else. Um, I just like, I don't, I don't co collect um, uh, previews and things like that because they are not what I consider a comic book. Um, if you do, if you want to consider them to be comic books, you want NFTs to be a comic, you go do you. Um, in the meantime, I will, I will pursue the hobby in the way that makes me happy. The debate rages on. Uh, if I did comic cons, I would have my books up like you have, you know, and I would have an iPad set up that would rotate through my NFTs that I had for sale. Oh, you, 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 you dirty dog. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the debate continues. There's still no uh, clear winner yet. We're here to track it all and tell you what we think. And you guys tell us. All right, my next piece of viewer mail is also an email that we got uh, at bronzeandmoderngods at gmail.com from Brad Horner. Hi. Hi, Brad. Any advice or steps for a beginner to start selling on Instagram? Well, Brad, you're in luck because tonight we're having a sale on the Bronze and Modern Gods Instagram at Bronze and Modern Gods starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. All right, but seriously. Yes, we have lots of advice for selling on Instagram, and that can be found on the episode we did about selling on Instagram. Uh, look in the description below, and you'll find a link to that episode, and check it out. And if you have any further questions, hit us up, and we'll be happy to help. But in the meantime, if you want to see how it's done, join us at Bronze and Modern Gods <laughs> on our Instagram tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. To me, to me, the secret is be a fan of comics, post on, on, on your Instagram channel, what you're interested in and build an audience that way. And it will come organically. Yeah. Uh, we didn't start off by selling on Instagram. We started here. Uh, we started talking about comics and showing how much we love the hobby and collecting. And, and uh, I think that helps. Uh, if I'm going to be real honest with you guys, I think that it gives you a bit of credibility, hopefully that you know what you're talking about. You're not here just to gouge people and run. Uh, and, it, you know, it's it's a long haul, really. It's not a quick thing, but you'll find some uh, uh, some tips in that episode. Yep. All right, what you got? Uh, my next piece of view, Meryl, is from Timothy K. Tim Kosis. I know exactly who this is. <laughs> the first comic I ever bought uh, when I was a tyke was a Frank Miller Daredevil number 186. That's such a that's such a great story. The Daredevil, Frank Miller especially, his run on Daredevil 
was just just set the tone for the character. I remember reading, um, you know, the, the Electra saga. And, I don't know if it was good for little tykes, but <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I, I think he's using it more. Uh, yeah. Is that the angel dust issue? <laughs> Uh, it's also yeah it was quite violent um but you know like like frank miller does it was a it was a hard it was a good story um and i like i said i think it set the tone for daredevil from that point forward and um it, i love to read about people who are in the hobby and what their first comic was that they can remember buying um my first comic easily was uh an early uh legion of superheroes unfortunately i don't know the number because I was given a stack of them mm. uh, and I started reading those. But um, yeah. And anybody else who has a story about their first comic, please post it in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear them. Uh, we might have a whole episode about that. That'd be yeah. great. Uh, yeah, definitely. My first time. All right. My last piece of your mail is from 180 AD. Great year for wine. Love the VV perspective from longtime passionate comic collectors. Thank you. Very excited to see how the platform grows in the coming years. I am too. As you could probably tell from the last few weeks, I'm pretty bullish on this. Uh -huh. And I pick this comment specifically because it is a great segue to the comic NFT watch. <laughs> great. All right. Not a lot this week. I don't want to bore you guys with uh, the common numbers and this one did this and this one did this. Just a couple of updates. We had two new drops that happened this week. Immortal Hulk number one and all new Captain America number one. Now, I was less than excited for both of these. Richard, how about you? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the strategy for the titles that they use in these drops. You know, the, the big keys, I completely understand. But these other ones, I'm not so sure about. I well, they they seem to have settled into a groove of a drop every Tuesday and Thursday. So we're looking at a very regular schedule and cadence now. And I wonder how long are they going to keep that up? And I wonder if they're holding back the big keys, you know, because they they have a, a schedule now. They love this revenue. They just want to keep yeah. up and stuff out. My counter to that is you've got a lot of big keys you're sitting on. I mean, you may not consider it, but like Howard the Duck number one, people yeah. would be excited for that. Even uh, mid-sized keys like uh, Wolverine number one, the limited series, that would be a great, great drop and draw a whole bunch of interest. Wolverine number one, the ongoing series from mm -hmm. 1988, all new Wolverine number one with X-23. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I, I don't know the strategy. It, it's almost like, someone who's a fan of the mcu is, mm. as a to the comics is picking these because like oh sam wilson's captain america so let's do all new cap why not do winter soldier first winter soldier cap six they probably don't know that that's his first appearance so i'm really curious i want to get in touch with someone from vv and ask them these questions yeah i you know i'm waiting for this to mature you know this is still such a new platform um i'd like to see I, I, I'm, I'm expecting them to have teething problems, both with the technology, like we've seen, but also in the picking of, you know, the titles. And maybe year two, we'll see a, a more stable cadence of keys and then second tier keys and maybe third tier keys and skip all these, you know, other books. Let's talk about the tech for a second. So I did my experiment this week. I was ready for the Hulk drop with my iPhone and my iPad. I logged into my account on both. And when the buy now button appeared on both, I hit both. I hit my phone slightly before the iPad. The phone went through. The iPad stopped me and said, nope, you can't do this. You, you're, or, Your account's already active over here. I was like, oh, good. That's good. I was kind of, yeah, exactly. I was kind of happy it, it didn't work. So you really have to, so the, the secret is create a different account, I guess. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from doing that, right? right exactly. Um, I did end up with a secret rare Immortal Hulk number one. Yeah, congratulations. You know, it's like it's like the mob. I think I'm out and they pull me back in. <laughs> so the big question is, are you going to turn around and sell it? That is the debate. The day of the drop, it was selling for 1.7K uh, gems. You know, 1,700 gems. Wow. Right. Later that day, it dropped to 1,300. 
Then mm-hmm. it went back up to 14. Then it went down to 12. Today, uh, as of this recording, it's at 13, 14 again. So I don't know. I think what I might do, again, this is t- twice in one episode where we're going back to eBay after all of our ranting and raving. I might put it up on eBay at a buy it now at a price and just to see what happens. Yeah, I, I turned around when I got my, I didn't get a secret where I got an ultra, uh, ultra rare. I immediately convert, you know, sold it on the marketplace and got, got mm-hmm. gems for it. Um, yeah, if I had to do it again, I would do exactly that. I would sell it on eBay and uh, immediately convert it to cash as opposed to gems in the process. You know what I might do? I might put it up for sale tonight at our Instagram live sale at Bronze of Modern Gods at our Instagram page, eight o'clock. Yeah, all right, I had enough of that. All right. <laughs> it's really getting annoying, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is time for a kitty break. Is that Tinker Balls? Right. Yes, this is Tinker Balls. Oh, I look at little Tinker Balls <laughs> making another cameo on the podcast. All right, it is time for everyone's favorite market watch, the Instagram market watch with Elite underscore Comics 11. This is when we're joined by Ali, who's going to share three big notable sales that happened this week on Instagram. So let's go there now. Dancing, 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 dancing. <laughs> And here is the man, the myth, the legend himself right now. It is Ali from Elite underscore Comics 11. Hello, Ali. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, It is going. We've got the uh, IG Market Watch. Why don't you remind everybody what it is and what you do? Yeah, we're at Elite underscore Comics 11 on Instagram. We're the platform's premier consignment page. So we're always dropping uh, crazy books for sale on our page and helping people sell off their books. Um, So shoot us a DM. And you've got three primo examples this week. Uh, take it away with number one. Yeah, so the first one on the list, these are uh, a few books that sold on Elite Comics 11 uh, the past week or so. So the first one's King Spawn number one. This is a CGC 9.8. It's signed and numbered by the, by Todd McFarlane. Um, I don't know if you guys have covered this on your show yet, but it's we've, kind of- we've, heard, we've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. So this sold for twelve ninety nine, and I don't know if there's any sales data out there on that yet. But these are pretty new. No, unfortunately, GPA has no data yet. Uh, yeah, this was the strictly limited one. Was there? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, two hundred and fifty of those made? No, there were seven seventeen hundred. Seventeen, roughly. Yeah, it's definitely more than two fifty. Yeah, wow. they're they're numbered. Wow. Well, Tinker Balls is excited. I can see. Yes, that. I'm sorry. It was either pick him up or, or have him attack me. So, no, don't ever apologize for it. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Todd the God, uh, uh, I read today, I don't know if it's uh, been confirmed, but I read five TV and movie projects currently uh, in uh, discussion development for spawn related stuff. So, really? This Spawn universe, I think he's he's uh, looking over to the side and saying, wait, I want some of this uh, TV and movie money. What the heck? Not a yeah, bad well, uh, From the view of the page, um, Spawn has definitely been in high demand. So I, that's probably a big reason for it. A lot of excitement there about the projects that are coming. Great. So, uh, okay, the next, speaking of excitement about the projects that are coming. So the next one's Amazing Spider-Man number 14. This is the first Green Goblin, of course. It's a C, it was a CGC 7.0 with off-white pages. Um, it sold for $6,625. A lot of excitement around this character and the rest of the Sinister Six. Yeah, the, the 90 day on this book is $67.84. So someone got a good price on this book. Yeah, and this is the first issue that Spidey showed he could stick to ceilings. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, it's a great book. Uh, yeah, the Green Goblin is definitely going to be a character uh, upcoming. And now it's the time to buy these kinds of keys. I, I see these reports and I just think, you know, in my head the whole time, I had a 9.0. <laughs> don't, don't go down that road, Sean. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> leads to sadness. I know, I know. Let's let's keep it upbeat. Uh, Hulk crossover. First meeting of Spidey and the Hulk as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and this is kind of the uh, tryout for Steve Ditko uh, on the Hulk. He had done the last issue of the Hulk six issue series, and um, before this, so not a tryout, but he took over the Hulk feature when it launched in Tales to Astonish. So, uh, not a 
bad thing to remember too about this book besides well, old Harry Osborne or Norman. What's the history there? Like the Hulk, they brought the Hulk in to help the Hulk or to help Spider-Man or which, which way was it? Definitely to help the Hulk. The Hulk had been canceled by this point and was just kind of bopping yeah. around the Marvel universe. You know, he was in the Avengers for two issues and then he fought the Avengers for two issues. And, uh, and so he was just kind of an orphan at that point and they didn't really have a direction for him. And I think, you know, Stan gets a lot of, a lot of credit, but I think Steve Ditko probably was the one who said, okay, if you want to do a Hulk feature, here's how you should do it. Because he really gave it a direction when it was Stan and Jack, those first five issues of the Hulk series, it was all over the place. He changed at night uh, he changed on demand when he had a little laser pointer that he started <laughs> a laser pointer like a cat. Yeah, there was, one, there was one issue where you know he's got the Hulk's body, but Bruce Banner's brain. Then later on, it goes wrong, and he's got the Hulk's body, but Bruce Banner's head. It's like the most disturbing image. And <laughs> I just didn't know what was going on with that book. So I get a kind of little sturdy Steve to go some credit there for putting that on the right path. <laughs> All right. So the last one we're sharing today, um, this is a milestone for Elite Comics 11. This is All-Star Comics number eight. It's the first appearance of Wonder Woman um, in a CGC 5.0 cream to off-white pages. This is the biggest book we've ever sold on one of our live sales so far just beating out a superman number one earlier uh in the year so this one sold for fifty seven thousand dollars the last sale the sales on this book are sparse to begin with the last sale was for 50 grand and 5400 in september of last year uh -huh. so uh i think 54 is an incredible deal am i misremembering or is this the second all-star eight you've sold in the last month yeah, we sold a we sold a lower grade one. I think it was a two point oh. Yeah, I think, yeah, 2 .0. Like I think we featured it, but this one, um, I mean, you just you don't see them much at all. But right. when you know when a five point oh came around and it moved on the page, I definitely thought it was noteworthy. And I mean, it was creamed off white pages. What is it? Nineteen forty one, nineteen forty two. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You guys are putting up the image. Um, it, it was a beautiful copy. Uh, yeah, I think they sold it before they announced Wonder Woman 94. <laughs> <laughs> no, th th these these kinds of, you know, first appearances are just pivotal. This is the, one of the Holy Trinity, you know, yeah. so to, to have this book uh, is a real pinnacle in somebody's collection. Would Wonder Woman 94 take place in Seattle? I think. You think so? Yeah. Kirk Cobain in there somewhere? Well, hey, thanks, Holly. I will stop <laughs> rambling. Let you get back to your life. Remind everybody where you they can find you and what you do. Yeah, you need help selling a book or you want to just check out some awesome books to buy, go head over to at elite underscore comics 11 on Instagram. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And remember to follow them at elite underscore comics 11. Lots of fun live sales, lots of uh, great books throughout the week being posted. Speaking of live sales, hey, I don't know if you guys know this or not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> he's, he's incorrigible. <laughs> but we're having a live sale on Instagram, browser Modern Gods, 8 o'clock tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific. Be there. All right, Richard. Anything else for our people this week? Our peeps? Our, our peeps? No, the, thanks for the comments. We really, really, really appreciate the comments. We love to interact with uh, people and uh, it gives us insight in, as to what you want to see in the future from us, from shows. So feel free to drop a note, either an email or, or a comment on the video. If we haven't told you lately uh, how much we appreciate you guys, uh, let us take a second now to tell you that. Sincerely, uh, when we did started doing this uh, a little over a year and a half ago, we never imagined – the view counts. We were happy when we got our first video that had a hundred views. <laughs> we, we actually celebrated that. So thank you all very much. And hopefully you'll pop in tonight and say hi. Uh, if not, we will catch you on Monday and have a great weekend. And everybody stay safe.